Hi, I'm Kevin Hoyt, Platform Evangelist with Adobe. We've been talking about RAA problems you never knew existed. In this session, I'd like to talk to you about implicit paging. What's implicit paging? Well, let's take a look at what we've talked about in some other sessions. I've talked about things like virtual lists to optimize how much render time we're taking to deliver the list that the user's going to scroll through. I've talked about things like character formats and getting that data across the wire to display in the first place. If you look at these in terms of overall architectural problems, we're really talking about rendering performance and data performance. Implicit paging is a continuation of these. And we've talked about, in some of the other sessions, what it would take to deliver character formats or even binary formats across the wire if we had a record set of, say, 5,000 rows. But here's the deal. Go to a Walmart. A general Walmart store will have about 100,000 distinct items in inventory. Right? That's not five of the same cans of mushroom soup or, uh, or five of the same brand of Kleenex or, or, or what have you. It's, the, it's actually distinct items. So, you know, ivory scented Kleenex and lavender scented Kleenex and so on and so forth. So all those different items, 100,000 distinct items. Now, if you're an inventory manager at a Walmart store, how do you manage 100,000 distinct items coming across the wire? How do you do that efficiently? Just to jog your memory again, if we're looking at 100,000 records of a basic inventory thing, so an ID, a name, maybe some other uh, simple data about it, one or two fields of simple data, uh, data about that item, we're looking at 100,000 distinct items. With XML, including compression across the wire, you could be looking at somewhere in the range of 950K, a meg just for the data. That doesn't even count render time. If you're talking about uh, JSON, I'll try to strip out all the excess character data that we might have with XML and go for a more bare bones approach. You shave off some, but not much. You're still right around 800K to deliver that 100,000 rows. Uh, if you're going to binary, binary clearly gives you a big savings, um, but uh, it still is a fairly, fairly significant amount of data at 500K. Now that's just getting it across the, that's actually just what you have to deliver across the wire. That doesn't count what you're going to do to that machine's RAM, what you're going to do to the processor to render that stuff, and how you're going to manage it. If you're talking about render performance, right, this is the other side of the equation. With XML, you could be looking at upwards of 60 seconds on a high-end machine uh, for that 100,000 rows. Now, these are just sample data that I've used based on, uh, based on some testing on my machine. Your mileage may vary, but the point remains that getting that data across the wire is going to be one problem, and then rendering it's going to be another problem. Uh, JSON will take you down to the roughly 30-second range to actually go ahead and get uh, that, that data rendered, which is an excellent time savings over the 60 seconds, because no one wants to sit there for 60 seconds to see my 100,000 rows. Uh, and then if we go down to binary, we see even a more significant savings, all the way down to about 10 seconds, maybe even a little bit more um, for about 150K worth of data. So that's some great savings, but 100,000, is it still, is it enough? Especially if I want to do in time of real-time transactions or if I want to do uh, multiple screen refreshers or working with deeper, larger sets of data. So the way we usually get into dealing with this is we say, well, you know what, Kevin, nobody would, in their right mind would actually send 500K, a megabyte, or even just 100K. No one would realistic, realistically send that large chunk of data across the wire all the time. What we would do is we provide next and previous buttons to get the next five or the next 10 or the next 100. And I got to tell you, from an RAA perspective, that's a weak answer. Being able to have to do next and previous just doesn't, that's, that's, you might as well be telling them, hey, refresh your page, refresh your page. That's not rich. There's nothing rich about that. So what can you do? How can you solve that? Well, that's when we get into implicit paging because Next and previous, quite frankly, already exist in the operating system. It's called a scroll bar, right? The arrow at the top, that's your previous. The arrow at the bottom, that's your next. Those buttons already exist for you, so use them. And a scroll bar goes on to give you even more. Scroll bar will tell your user what page they're currently on in terms of where that handle sits. It'll tell them how many records are in the total available data set based on the size of the handle and the, and the overall uh, length of the track. They'll be able to guesstimate, generally speaking, how far they can scroll and how much data they have left to scroll through. Now that is an RAA. It's a scroll bar. It seems simple, but how do we take that and then work that into the hundred thousands rows of data? Well, implicit paging says, 
let's leverage the intelligence we can we can build on top of the scroll bar to offset when we fetch our data from the server. Okay? So think about it like this. We load up a set of data, just enough to fill maybe a little bit more than what's visible on the screen. So let's say we send over 100 rows of that 100,000. Now with a binary exchange, that's going to come across really quick. So that comes across really quick. The scroll bar, on the other hand, is going to be told how many records are totally available in that database. So it'll represent the full actual size. Then as you scroll on that scroll bar, what will happen is, we'll, is you can detect when the user starts to scroll, detect when they stop scrolling, wait for maybe a second, or maybe don't wait, that's up to you and your implementation, then go ahead and fetch the next 100 rows that'll fill just that screen. So you might, have, you might be scrolling through 100,000 records, 200,000 records, or what have you, the reality is, is that since you're only ever dealing with paging out a thousand, or 100 records or 1,000 records at a given point in time, using a binary format, it's very efficient, both on the client CPU and on the bandwidth. So let me give you an example. If you look at, say, 1,000 rows per page of a basic data set, like a user ID, a first name, last name, a phone number, an email, a basic data set. If you look at 1,000 rows per page, you look at about 7K per binary packet. Um, that's about 0.6 seconds. So 0.6 seconds, that's not long to wait at all. And keep in mind that I'll never have to worry about actually fetching the full 100,000 because I can use that built-in next and previous thing we call the scroll bar. So now I can wait a second to infinitely scroll. The, the great thing about that is it removes the demand from your, your user's system to have to scale to be able to hold more data to the server. Server is a much better place for us to scale. Hardware is cheap, we throw in more RAM, we throw in more processors, we cluster it out, whatever we need to do, that's a much better place to scale than to tell your users, oh, to use my application, you need to upgrade all your PCs. If you kind of step back and apply this in a larger set, what you're looking at is you take virtual lists, binary data transfer, and this implicit paging approach, and what you've got yourself for yourself is an enterprise RIA. An RA that's capable of scaling to any RA, inter, any enterprise needs. So that's implicit paging. That's it for this session in the RA problem series. Check back again soon. Until then, I'm Kevin Hoyt.